thick Canadian wildfire smoke dominates Kelloland today, but there is some cooler, cleaner air that's coming down from the north, and that should uh, help to alleviate that smoke during the nighttime hours. With that brisk north wind, a low 44 Sioux Falls, 41 Aberdeen, 42 in Pier 39 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, a brisk north wind, and it's going to be chilly tomorrow. 61 in Sioux Falls, about 10 degrees below normal. 63 in Aberdeen, 67 up here, 64 in Rapid City. But a south wind and sunshine returns us into the 70s for the upcoming weekend. We'll have further details on that in just a moment. Kelloland News starts now. Live from Kelloland Media Group, Kelloland News first at four. A bipartisan group of lawmakers is working to block foreign adversaries from buying U.S. farmland. Plus, we look at the issues the Downtown Sioux Falls Safety Council wants to tackle as the area continues to grow. And later, do you remember the live ads on Kelloland Television? We're going to introduce you to one man who was part of their production as we celebrate our 70th anniversary. Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in to First at Four. I'm Don Jorgensen. And I'm Kelly Volk. Two people wanted in connection with the murder of a six-year-old in Kansas City were arrested in Sioux Falls. Authorities arrested Lakivis Sloan as well as a 17-year-old boy. They were taken into custody as they got off a Greyhound bus in Sioux Falls. They are charged with second-degree murder. Investigators say that the suspects were in a car and fired shots at a house. A bullet hit a six-year-old uh, boy, Sir Antonio Brown. The boy's family believe that the shooters were targeting another family member. Detectives are still looking for a third suspect. Police in Sioux City, Iowa, say that a pursuit across state lines ended with officers finding more than 400 fentanyl pills. Thursday morning, authorities in South Sioux City, Nebraska, were chasing after a vehicle being driven by 23-year-old Benito Miguel Carell. Police say that he had outstanding warrants for his arrest. The pursuit crossed into Sioux City, Iowa. Stop sticks were used to disable the vehicle. As police were arresting Carell, officers say that they found a baggie in his pocket with 434 fentanyl pills. He faces a long list of drug and traffic charges. Well, one man is dead after Iowa authorities say his tractor was rear-ended in Lyon County. According to the Iowa State Patrol, a 77-year-old man was driving a tractor with a sprayer unit near Edna when a tanker truck tried to pass him. Investigators say the truck hit the sprayer unit, causing the tractor to roll into the ditch. The 77-year-old died at the scene. The South Dakota Highway Patrol has released the names of two people killed in a crash near Plankington over the weekend. Authorities say 17-year-old Owen Robert Girdall of Mitchell and 29-year-old Jeffrey Dwayne McGee Jr. of Mount Vernon died at the scene. Troopers say that the vehicle Girdall was driving along I-90 collided head-on with a semi-tractor trailer. The Highway Patrol continues to investigate the cause of the crash. Well, the smoke from the wildfires in Canada continues to make the air quality in Kelloland dangerous. Here's a live look at the EPA's interactive air quality map. We will show you in just a moment that uh, most of South Dakota is being impacted by the wildfire smoke. The areas in red, which uh, we can't see for some reason right now. There we go. Uh, the areas in red are considered unhealthy. The light purple is very unhealthy and the dark purple is is hazardous. I'm trying to look at that map. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of color there. Is, is that Sioux Falls below the red? I, you have better eyes than I do. <laughs> no, I don't. I really don't. Hazard, uh, officials say under these conditions, the elderly, young, and anyone with respiratory problems should uh, avoid excessive physical exertion and minimize your time outdoors. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I was looking today outside. It's, it's more prominent than it's been all week. Yeah, this is the most smoke I think we've seen, Megan. The smoke is thick this afternoon and hopefully by this evening and into tonight we'll get a north wind that will kind of try to clean the air a little bit. Right now 74 degrees in Sioux Falls, the northwest wind at 11 miles an hour. Everyone is dealing with that smoke. Up in Aberdeen the smoke seems to be thinning right now, 65 degrees, north winds at 14. And in central South Dakota, it has been a blanket of smoke this afternoon. 68 in Pier, north winds at 18 miles an hour. And smoky skies in Rapid City at 66, north winds at 22. 
Our temperatures this afternoon are actually around normal for this time of year. 71 in Yankton, 71 in Watertown, 70 in Phillip. A little bit cooler in Custer right now at 57. Yesterday, our northwest wind brought the smoke into the area. Tonight, the northwest wind will help bring in some cleaner air for the day tomorrow. For tonight, breezy in eastern Kelloland, 44 Sioux Falls, 40 in Aberdeen, 42 in Pier, and 39 in Rapid City. Tomorrow, much cooler, breezy in eastern South Dakota, 61 Sioux Falls, 63 in Aberdeen, 67 in Pier, and 64 in Rapid City. But then the weekend will have more sunshine. A south wind will help bring in the 70s and 80s for both Saturday and Sunday. We'll take a closer look in just a little bit. All right. Thanks a lot, Megan. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum is reportedly considering a run for president of the U.S. According to the CBS News, Burgum is nearing a decision to launch a bid for the White House and has begun hiring political consultants. The network also stated that Burgum would rely on his extensive personal wealth and financial network in a presidential campaign. In a meeting with the Forum Editorial Board, Burgum acknowledged that a presidential run has been on his mind. Burgum has served as North Dakota's governor since 2016 and is currently serving his second term after he was reelected in 2020. Montana's Republican governor has signed a bill outlawing TikTok's use in his state. The law prohibits app stores from allowing downloads of TikTok within Montana's borders. However, experts say app stores don't currently have the ability to block downloads on a state-by-state -state basis. Montana's governor says TikTok, as well as the Google and Apple-run app stores, could face penalties of $10,000 per violation. TikTok says this violates its users' First Amendment rights. The legislation is set to take effect in 2024, but it's expected to face legal challenges. Last night, a panel of Minnesota lawmakers came to agreement on taxes that include direct rebate checks to Minnesotans. Single tax filers would receive $260, married couples would receive $520, as well as $260 for each dependent. A family of five could see up to $1,300. The deal also includes reducing state income taxes on Social Security, child tax credits, and relief for renters and homeowners. There is also a $300 million one-time aid to local governments for public safety costs. Democrats and Republicans are working together to block foreign adversaries from buying U.S. farmland. Data from the USDA shows investors from China, Russia, Iran and North Korea own close to 400,000 acres. But as Washington correspondent Jesse Turner reports, lawmakers say that number is likely much higher and worry about what the ownership means to food and national security. We can no longer turn a blind eye. Congress is now laser focused on nearly 400,000 acres of U.S. farmland across the country that USDA data shows is owned by China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. Foreign countries. Um that uh, don't appreciate America. Alabama Republican Congressman Dale Strong wants to know exactly what these countries are doing on the properties and worries they could threaten important crops like grain, cotton, and corn. It's taking it out of the supply chain for the United States of America. Strong stresses much of the land is located right outside military bases. It is a direct threat to national security. Strong just introduced a bill with Virginia Democrat Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger to prohibit foreign adversaries from buying or leasing U.S. farmland. Spanberger said in a statement that as a former CIA case officer, she knows entities like the Chinese Communist Party can target national security interests through seemingly harmless transactions. It's time for America to know who owns our property. Any foreign ownership of U.S. farmland must be reported to USDA. But lawmakers argue current loopholes often lead to inaccuracies or incomplete data. USDA officials will not weigh in on the bill while it makes its way through Congress, but said lawmakers are the only ones who can make significant changes to the reporting process. In Washington, I'm Jesse Chenor.